I have actually done a video about a lens before and you probably haven't saw that video before because I done that on the Cantonese, Cantonese channel yes I have a Cantonese channel as well and uh, because that was sponsored only for my Cantonese video so you haven't saw this in this channel but this time I'm talking about another lens as you can see from the title a Q-Lab before I've got that lens I used just various external hard drive for all my previous uh, footage before that even though I want just one product shot of an uh, old camera for example I have to look for these hard drive I have labeled them for the date of the project and I have to look for them I have to find the AC adapter plug it to my iMac and look for those from these various hard drive really annoying that nest serves that problem really well that I can just search inside that nest but that only got one gigabit ethernet and I can't edit any footage from that nest so this time this is this, this is not wide enough okay this is a QLab TVS 672 XT lens. It's a really long lens, but all you need to know is that it got six drive and it got Thunderbolt three. Wow. Okay, I forgot to tell you that this video is sponsored by them so you can take it with a grain of salt but then real life test doesn't lie and you will see What does it have? It has an Intel i3 quad core 3.1 GHz CPU inside it's like a tiny PC and it got 8 gigabit byte of RAM and I can't, I still can't get <sighs> Look at this brand new. Ooh. These are the six hard drive bay, and now it turns into a microwave oven. <laughs> Looks like one, but we also should look at Lord, what does it have on the outside, on on the front, a power button, and there is a USB port with a button on it and I suppose this is for those copy feature uh, there's a select and enter there's some kind of menu system you can go even on here not just on the computer interface and there's a huge status or LED display now at the back there are two huge fans and there's one small fan and there are uh, there's actually two slots for you can put in some other things in here as well and then here you got a Thunderbolt interface there's two Thunderbolt ports and actually there is two more USB-C ports here and then one more USB another USB there are actually three Ethernet ports one this one is 10 gigabit Ethernet and there are two 1 gigabit Ethernet it's interestingly there's even an HDMI port and then there's a speaker and a mic jack as well so it can be your media center it can play movie as well now for hard drive this time it is sponsored by Western Digital HEST These are the Ultra Star Series data center hard drives Now these are enterprise class hard drives they, they are made for 7 days a week 24 hours of operation It got sensor inside to detect vibration to prevent damaging from vibration Now in Hong Kong it is distributed built by VST computer and when you register them online when there is anything wrong with this hard drive it included delivery to repair is included with the warranty Just like any other NAS, you will have to set it up It will download the OS from the internet and install it into your hard drives Then you have to format your hard disk, choose a RAID type I choose RAID 5 I think it is a good balance between speed and security And finally, you can create a shared folder and start to copy things into the NAS from your computer Okay, yeah, finally ready and this is right here it's running running and uh, yeah i mean it is quite it is quieter than i thought as well now first i want to show you how is it like opening a old final cut pro project from my old last which is using one gigabit per second ethernet 
And you can see that when it's loading all those thumbnail down there, it's a little bit slow, but it works. Now you can see 4K footage. Yeah, it's a little bit delayed after I press play. And then sometimes it's a little bit laggy, like, oh, what's it doing? Again. Yeah. It's not smooth, but it doesn't matter because what I have been using my own NAS is just I want to look for, for example, I want to look for the overheating clip of the Sony ZV-1, which is right here. So I would copy this to the project I'm working with. No problem at all. Oh, if I'm trying to edit, Every press, it I have to wait for a whole second. That is not acceptable when you're doing editing. But this thing's QLab, 10 gigabit per second, 10 times faster. Well, I mean, theoretically, 10 times faster. Faster. Is it actually works if I edit directly from this? One problem is that my iMac only have one gigabit per second Ethernet. But remember, this has Thunderbolt. But this is not like an external hard disk. When you plug in Thunderbolt, it actually acts as a network. It basically uses the Thunderbolt cable as an Ethernet cable. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, now, now let's see directly edit video from the QLab. So now let's look at this. This is not my video. This is actually Kai's video, but I edit for him. So now this is directly open from the QLab. And you can see it is... It is fast. In this project, actually, there are three cameras. Of course, there's the C70, and there's the EOS R, and there is the A7R Mark III. They're all 4K footages. So you can see it's actually quite smooth. With A7R III, this A7R III, now this doesn't have any rendering done, and it plays smoothly. And actually, these are multi cam footage as well. So when I'm playing back now, I'm playing back two 4K videos simultaneously with the end result going through film convert nitro. It's not even the built-in native color correction. By the way, this video, this video you're looking at, I mean, you're watching right now, I will edit with the QLab as well. And when you watch it, it's that I had edited this video with the QLab. Now actually the only thing that is struggle is the C70 footage. 4K50, yeah, it struggle a bit. It's, it's lagging. Oh, it's not smooth. Oh, it's, this is not good enough. No, sometimes you have to go to activity monitor and check out the CPU. Now when you're playing, well, when I'm playing back that footage, the CPU is actually going like 200%. Look at the four core. They are all already top up, so it is actually my iMac not fast enough to decode the C70 4K 50 footage. Not that the QLab is not fast enough. So look at another example. This is Super Pocket Pro, and as you can see, playing back a side by side split screen to 4K stream, no problem at all. There's no rendering done, as you can see on top of the timeline. There's no rendering done. This is all real time playing back from QLab, especially my footage, my side of the footage is a ProRes video, ProRes file. So it is even more um, demanding to the storage because file size are bigger. It actually less demanding to my iMac CPU, but more demanding on the QLab and it's still, it's still deliver. Look at that. <laughs> Now let's give it a bigger problem to work with because these are some Canon R5 AK footage. Now you can't play it black smoothly, but and after all, this is AK and I have optimized them. So this is not the problem of my CPU. This is the QLab can't keep up with the optimized ProRes AK, which is a big challenge. But the thing is, if I set it to better performance, now it works. It is a lower quality, but then it works. I can actually edit AK footage directly from QNAP. Look at that. There's no rendering done, as you can see on the top. This is directly AK from 
the QLab, even though this is a lower quality, but it works. I can actually edit this from this. Now let's look at some actual speed tests with the Backmagic Disk Speed Test software. I want to show you this hard drive I used to edit all my video on. It used Thunderbolt 2, so it is actually not that new. If you look at the write and read speed, it's just kind of so-so. But it's still good enough for most of my just 4K editing, simple 4K editing. Next up, let's look at the really basic portable external hard drive. These are mainly for just backup or just for documents and photos, so it is expected it is not fast at, at all. At last, this is my only SSD drive I have. This is not a really fast, the latest super speed SSD. But then this is still the fastest external drive I have. And this is good for, for example, multi-cam 4K or split screen 4K editing. Let's try the QLab. QLab. Here we go. Wow. 500. 500 megabyte, right? And then read. Come on. Whoa, 600. That's two SSD. <laughs> I mean, this is this is double my SSD. That's crazy. I always thought this is pretty good. This is even better. What the? 500, 600. Wow. Oh, drop a bit, but 400. Still. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Power! <laughs> okay, around 500 read and write. That's not bad. This is actually already the fastest storage I have ever used. Mine! Bro! For now, I have been using the Thunderbolt thing to do the network networking. I mean, I'm using the Thunderbolt network because I don't have 10 gigabit even at the fast, even at the fast, even at because the iMac doesn't have it. How do I test it though? Because I have also borrowed a uh, adapter from QLab. This is from QLab as well. Thunderbolt 3 on one side, 10 gigabit even at on the other side. Now as I mentioned, my iMac now is connected with the QLab with Ethernet. But that's one thing really great with working with, for example, Apple MacBook because MacBook Pro, that all of them doesn't have Ethernet port. If you want to use Ethernet, if you have a NAS that only have Ethernet, then you will have to use an adapter on your MacBook Pro to use Ethernet. But because this one has Thunderbolt, you can just use Thunderbolt as legwork cable. So now iMac through 10 gigabit Ethernet, MacBook Pro through Thunderbolt, let's say, together. For example, I'm playing back here, and then, oh, I'm another person. I'm log number two. And I'm editing this bit. It's like a, it's like a Mexican standoff. Yeah, no problem at all. So I edit until this point, put it into my timeline, and then I'm log number one. I'm editing from here, put it in timeline, and then, I mean, everything is so smooth. Timeline. There's no problem at all. And there's, there's log number one and log number two both editing. Let's try Super Bowl Bros on the log number one, the iMac. Split screen to 4K stream on my iMac and then on my MacBook Pro, there's one 4K stream playing back. And they are still so smooth. I mean, three 4K stream playing back simultaneously. So this is really great for video editing, but also don't forget this is a NAS a legwork attached story, so it's attached to the legwork. So what else you can do with the legwork attachment? Because well, one thing I like this kind of NAS a lot is that you can build your own personal cloud storage, like a personal Google Drive, Google, Google, Google Drive. You don't have to pay for Google Drive anymore. You can sync up with your laptop, your desktop, or with your personal drive. And also you can 
put in large file and then generate a link for your client to download or generate a link for people to upload large file to you. And another app that in the last you can install, which is this HBS hybrid backup sync. With this app, you can log in a lot of like your Google Drive, your Dropbox, your OneDrive. For example, I exchange a lot of huge file with Kai over from uh, UK. So when he upload a huge file to Google Drive, the NAS can download it immediately. So when I want to get a file, it's already in the NAS. I don't want, I don't need to log into Google Drive, wait for it to download. QLab is quite special that a lot of them got fundable. So it's really good for MacBook or a lot of PC uh, laptop these days. Probably doesn't have uh, Ethernet or even the Ethernet is not the fast 10 gigabit per second. But now with Thunderbolt, you just plug in Thunderbolt. There's no adapter needed. Just plug in Thunderbolt and good to go with the really fast video editing capability. So this is really special for QLab and check this out. This is the QLab TVS 672 XT. So check this out. This is really a great choice for video editing. One machine and serve multi-purpose problem. Check this out. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. I have actually done a video before about a NAS, a network something system. TVS uh, 640-72XT, 8 gigabyte by Western Digital as well. Western Digital S, Western Digital HGST, they are the server data center hard disk. Yeah, 